In this video, I'm going to show you all about PixCap, which is an online platform that enables you to create 3D character animations in a standard web browser. It's fast, easy to use, very powerful, and has AI motion capture. So you can take any video and capture the motion and place it onto your characters. Is this enough for me to switch from Blender to this for animation? Well, let's take a look and see. Now, before I start, it's important to say that this video is sponsored by PixCap. I don't take on many sponsored videos, but when it's something as useful as this, I'm happy to, because I think tools like this are important to know about and may well be the future of animation. So first of all, how much does it cost? Well, the great thing is it's free to use all of the features, which is another reason I'm happy to promote it. I think it's really good to see companies like this offering the tools to casual users for free. Now, some advanced aspects such as the AI motion capture require credits, but you do get 30 free credits per month. They're also hoping to introduce things like collaborative projects so you can easily work on an animation in a team. So let's take a look at the program itself. I've got a few test projects, but let's start a new one. And straight away, you can see the nice easy interface. You've got a library of assets you can use. If I go to assets here, you can also import your own. You can also import your own character or you can create your own 3D avatar in Ready Player Me, which is actually really good fun. And you can make up a character from a photo or you can just choose random features and it's very quick and easy. I'm going to click and drag one in that I already made and this was based on a photo of me. The controls are similar to something like Maya, Unity or Unreal, so it's pretty standard, unlike Blender, unfortunately. And if I choose one of the bones, it's W, E and R for the different transform tools. Hold down Alt and left mouse button to circle around your character, middle mouse button to strafe around and wheel to zoom in and out. So we can simply grab a bone, press E and start rotating it to change the positions. We can use auto key and that's turned on when it's red and everything I'm doing at the moment is being recorded in this keyframe. One really cool thing if I zoom in on one of these hands here is that we've got some finger controls. I really like this feature. Obviously you can set your own rigs up in Blender to do this, but it really is quite awkward and complicated. On this, I've got the left hand here and I can use this slider on the side here to open and close it. Obviously the thumb's going inside there so I can just open up the thumb a bit to make a fist. I think that's fantastic. That's not the only feature. You've got an IK setup as well. So over here you can see IK setup mode in the inspector. If I press on that, I've got the IK setup wizard and I can have hand IK and feet IK and press save. And pretty instantly it sets up the IK for me. That means I can grab these and then move them. However, you can see the bones moving here, but not these ones. That's because it's got an IK blend, which is quite important. So you can go from FK to IK. So forward kinematics to inverse kinematics. Also in the IK wizard, you can change things like the foot controller. You've got the adjust foot options here and I can click on the back here press the W tool and move that IK controller so it's behind the heel there. Same for this one. Really great stuff, press apply, and then we've got this IK rig, and now I can click on the IK and I can blend between the IK or the FK in my scene. I'll just very quickly explain why you might want to blend that. With the feet, they're generally attached to the floor, so IK is much easier. If I squat my character down a bit with this bone here, and then click on these two and set my slider to fully IK, I'll just move that up a little bit more. I can then move these around and it moves my whole leg and it's easy to keep them attached to the floor. So whenever I move my main character, the hands and feet stick to the IK handles. However, let's say I was doing some sort of weird walk animation or maybe just rotate one of these. The right hand over here moves with my body, so that's FK. And when your hand isn't attached to something, you want FK so your arm moves with the body. But let's say I'm holding onto something here, I'm getting thrown around, then it's attached because of the IK. So IK is really useful if you want your hands and feet to stick to something like the floor or a door handle. And FK is really useful if you want your arms to kind of move with your body like a walk cycle. So having that feature in here and setting up the IK makes animation really easy and simple. Now here's a project where I use the AI motion capture and they're working on YouTube integration for this. This is a video from YouTube which I downloaded and then uploaded into here. I'll put the link in the description for anybody interested in this video. This guy's got lots of parkour moves and you can see the video here, the dive roll. The first time I tried this, it was in slow motion and that doesn't work, so make sure it is actually in real time. And I ran the video capture. You can see that I've used up some of my credits there and you can see what this looks like if I play my animation. It's done a pretty good job and that's without any cleanup or anything like that. It's just taken this action here and put it onto my character. Now I think this is a really good way of learning some animation. So obviously this isn't particularly clean, but it's not bad. 
I can go into the graph editor here and start playing around with it and learning a bit more about it. So for example, the right arm over here isn't captured particularly well, it's not too bad, but it sort of jumps up there and sort of flings around a little bit. So I could click on that and I've got the auto keyframe on so I could just keep jumping between frames and then tidy it up when something goes a little bit wrong. Or I can come along to my keyframe reduction tool here and reduce each of these keyframes to something like five frames instead and apply that and then press the keyframe reduction button. Oh, make sure I've got all of my keyframes selected first. So select them all, then keyframe reduction. And now it's reduced those keyframes to every five frames. And now it's a little bit easier for me to clean up. So I could take this area here where it sort of jumps a little bit and I could think about moving that about and adjusting it so it looks a lot cleaner. And with auto keying on, that will now be the new position for that arm. And I can obviously add new keyframes in if I need to as well. Now this isn't limited to one character in a scene. You can import a couple of characters and have them fight. You can import other FBX objects and have them fight in some sort of scene. I don't know quite how far you can go with the amount of polygons before it can't take any more, but it seems to handle a few characters without too much problem. Once you're finished, you can go to the export options here. You can publish to the web or to video. Both of those have a watermark, so that is a limitation of the free account. But the FBX and GLB, I think that's used for more things like VR and so forth. It's a little bit smaller files than FBX. They're both free to use, so you could take this back into Blender. Even better, you've got animation layers down here. So you can do a couple of layers like a walk cycle, a run cycle, a dive forward roll cycle, and export these as FBX and then put them into your game and you've got access to those different animations. So is all this enough to make me switch from Blender to PixCap? Yes, in some cases I certainly would. If I wanted to add some quick animations to a game character, then definitely this is a really great tool, especially with things like the AI motion capture, which I can then tidy up. And a lot of the time for me, speed is of the essence, because I'm doing quick little things here and there, and I really like this tool for that. Maybe for a big animated scene, I might utilize this for different aspects of the animations and then bring it back into Blender, but that's what makes this tool really versatile. I really think tools like this are the future of animation. Anything that makes the process easier for the creator is going to be the future in my opinion. Obviously there's limitations and it won't completely replace Blender or Maya, but it certainly has its place. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well done to PixCap for making a great tool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.